Hello and welcome to How Not to Play Magic the Gathering. Today we are going over our tempo deck, which is going to be showcased in uh, part 5 of our Magic Concept series. Uh, this is the gameplay footage that we're doing behind the scenes to see if we can get a game that actively showcases how best to use tempo. Uh, we've got our signpost card mirror shield hoplite for the backup mechanic. Uh, we've got a couple uh, backup creatures here with hanger scrounger, heel slasher, and our top end boon bringer valkyrie. So hopefully we can get some of those online. Uh, we do have some removal in Elspeth Smite, Destroy Evil, Invasion of Gobicon can flip into a pseudo-anthem effect, uh, giving a plus one counter each time somebody attacks. So, I mean, that's really good. And Archangel Elspeth just for flavor. So, hopefully this deck will do fairly well. I'm looking, let's see, first and foremost, to use mana effectively. Uh, let's see, showcasing the dual lands, uh, how to play them in portions of the game that will not hinder our tempo advantage. Uh, taking the initiative, as in being the proactive player and setting the pace of the game, forcing the opponent to react, removing blockers through combat tricks, and pushing our advantage. Alright, so generally just stuff that the deck is designed to do anyway. So let's see what we can find. Alright, so here we've got... Our turn one play going into a turn two play. We've got some backup here that we can do. So yeah, this looks like a good hand to keep. Opponent is mulliganing down to six. All right, so they are foregoing their first turn to play a dual land. We, however, are going to start off fast and strong with a one one or one two flyer. So hopefully we can push that. Oh, they are on life gain. That might pose a problem for us. Uh, let's go ahead and put out our 2-2 two -two to help block. Uh, all our stuff has vigilance, so we can attack without having to worry about keeping up blockers. Ooh, that's going to be... Uh, going to get rid of the flyer. Okay. Well, we can do something kind of tricksy here. Uh, let's attack with our 2-2 Vigilance. He does not block. Generally, you might want to cast Seal from Existence later on something bigger, but I don't have anything else to do here on turn 3 anyway, so rather than let the mana go to waste, we are going to drop Seal from Existence on their Circle of Containment. So that we get our creature back and we can basically get our tempo advantage back. And next turn we've got uh, mana up for red cap heal slasher. So we are looking pretty good at the moment. He is gaining a whole lot of life which is kind of hurting our... Never mind. He decided to give up. That's a shame. That was looking to be a really good game. All right, so with this opening hand, we don't have a turn one play. So if we had a dual land, this would be a great hand to throw down a dual land turn one. Unfortunately, we are missing that first turn tempo, which our opponent is able to uh, take advantage of. So we are starting a little bit behind here. Undead Butler is going to put some stuff in his graveyard. Alright. We're going to go with the Hoplite here, I think. 
Oh no, I should have gone with Baird. Because I could have done Baird into Hangar Scrounger to back it up. That was the wrong play. I should have gone with Baird. Where's the uh, undo button? Alright, so we're going to go ahead and take Hoplite into combat. If he double blocks, I can use Elspeth Smite to get rid of one of his blockers. He is not. So, unfortunately, I am going to be wasting a mana here by just dropping the recruiter and going. He does transform into a 3-3, which is not good. Maybe I can bait him into blocking it next turn. And if I can bait him into blocking, then I can do Elspeth Smite. So this attack with the butler here is going to is meant to bait a block, which means that he's got something in his graveyard that he wants to put into his hand. Uh, it could be another death bonnet sprout. It could be, uh, let's see, Titan of Industry. So yeah, I probably don't want to block the butler. Um. I will go ahead and just pass on blocks all together and we'll use Elspeth Smite to take out the Death Bonnet Hulk since it is a 3-3. This should kill it unless he has some kind of protection, which he does not. So that gets rid of that. I'll take one point of damage. Unfortunately, I am going to have to hit the butler here as I go into attack this turn. Alright, I think I'm gonna go with the Scrounger here. Purposely leaving one mana open. Uh, we are going to back up. Baird. Hoplite will copy that ability. Oh, he killed Baird! That's not nice, buddy. And Hoplite doesn't tap to attack, so I don't even get to use the backup trigger. Oh, that is so sad for me. Because I was going to use the Scrounger's ability to filter out to try to get some removal. Oh, well. Okay, so at present, I've got four mana and a heal slasher. So let's go ahead and drop heal slasher. We'll back up scrounger, copy it to hoplite. I don't have anything else to cast, so we'll do, we'll drop windscarred crag here. Um, let's go to combat first. Swing in with both. I do get to filter a card here, so we'll throw out the planes and get another hoplite. That's good, but I can't cast it this turn. So he will unfortunately get back something really big, but that prevents his sprout from transforming. Oh, he just got another sprout? Okay. Since I have nothing else to do, dropping Windscarred Crag here will gain me a life and not lose me any tempo, because I didn't have anything to cast anyway, so. And next turn I can do Hoplite and Scrounger. I don't even know what that does, it has a lot of words on it though. So what we're gonna do here is drop Hoplite he is tapped out so he has no interaction. So let's go ahead and do a backup on Heal Slasher. And new hoplite. Oh, I did get to do another one. Um sure, we'll go here on him too, why not? 
We'll go to combat. We'll swing with everybody who can. Uh, I get a whole bunch of triggers, so we'll discard my planes, filter it for... Enduring Bond Warden. Um, no, I think we'll go ahead and wheel that one too. Get another planes. And get another Bond Warden. Okay, well, whatever. So we do a whole bunch of damage. We've filtered through a whole lot of cards. And we've got another uh, set of backup triggers for next turn. So we are actually in a really good spot. Uh, aside from him getting a 1-1 one, one Titan of Industry. Let's see, he could probably do a 5, either gain 5 life, get a 4-4 four, four Rhino. Yep, he's gonna gain 5 life, that's fine. And gets a 4-4 four, four Rhino, yep. I mean, that's perfectly fine. I'm really not too afraid of a Rhino. Is he just gonna dump a whole bunch of creatures here? Ooh, Glissa, that I am afraid of. But. <sighs> Alright, well, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do about Glissa, because the first strike kind of kills everything. So we'll go ahead and drop Bond Ward. We'll back up Heal Slasher. We'll back up our Gibeon Recruiter. And our last top light. So we will go ahead and swing with the Heal Slasher. I don't care if it dies because then I can throw its plus one counters around. Technically the same with Hoplite, but I really don't want Hoplite to die. I want to keep it kind of as a blocker, so. We'll just go with Heal Slasher. If he blocks with Glissa, then they'll trade. That would actually be a bad thing for him to do. He should probably just throw the Titan token in front of it. He's going to block with Glissa. Okay, that is probably the worst thing he can do because now Glissa dies. Uh, let's see. And now I get to put counters somewhere else. Let's go, sure, here. Maybe I should have gone there on him. But I just kind of want to keep my whole board uh, stacked as opposed to just putting it all on one creature that can be killed with a go for the throat. Oh, he can bring out a token of Glissa. That's why he wasn't worried about it. That's okay. Ooh, raids too. All right. Wow, opponent is getting quite the board here. So if he sacrifices something, he can make me sacrifice something. The only thing I have is creatures, and so if he does sacrifice a creature, I would sacrifice my soldier token. So that does absolutely nothing for him. Seven. We are currently even on creatures. So unfortunately, there's not much I can do. If I swing in, Gliss is going to kill probably my 5-5, five, five, which is not good for me. So I think I need to just hole up right now and keep making tokens with Baird. He has zero creatures in his graveyard at the moment, as we can see on the Death Bonnet Sprout here. So he can't reanimate anything with the dollhouse until something else dies. Oh, shit. Well, that's Enough bad. With the mysteries. I've come. I'm tired of your secrets. I really need a Boonbringer Valkyrie right now. Is he going to sack a critter? Nope. That is not what I wanted. Oh, how do these blocks line up? So just between the Rhino and the Glissa, both of my mirrors shall die. And then, yeah, I really can't do anything. I might as well play my mountain because Lily's just gonna make me discard it. He got some good stuff in there. I am not winning this battle of attrition. At this point, the uh, 
tempo has swung in my opponent's favor. He has stalled out my board so that I can't push uh, damage in anymore. So, Drop unfortunately, it. there's not much I can do. And more land. All right, well, that's rather unfortunate that I've pulled three lands in a row. Don't overthink things. I have to pull Valkyrie now. I need to draw Valkyrie now or else Liliana's ultimate is going to destroy my board. And that is not Valkyrie. So I'm officially dead. All right, well, we do have Valkyrie in this hand. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot to do. So this is going to be bad. I really don't have a turn one play. So we will go ahead and drop our tap land to gain a life. All right, he's going to get rid of Smite. That's the only card he could have hit. So let's go ahead and start off with Hoplite, and hopefully we'll draw some more action, because this not a whole lot of tempo on his own. Alright, even less now, because opponent is essentially on mono black removal, so I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. Yep. That's exactly what they're on. No end of turn destroy? Hmm, that seems kind of sus. Alright, he's gonna make me discard two cards, so I need to keep my other lands. Yeah, we need to remove that. He's gonna make me disc two. Luckily, I have two lands that I can discard. And we'll go ahead and swing in. I hit him! I hit him! And now it's dead. And now it's dead. All right, well, we'll try that. And now it's dead. Mono black removal. That's such a bullshit deck. Okay, well this deck is very heavy on one drops. Unfortunately, I'm probably gonna miss out on Baird unless I pull a land. Uh, but I mean this is keepable. Hopefully, I draw a mountain. That's not a mount. That's another freaking one drop. 
All right, well, look out it is. Oh, this deck again. All right, well, I still don't have, I mean, any lands, so we'll go with Windscarred Crag. It's my only option. Unfortunately, that means I miss out on uh, playing a two-drop this turn. But I can do Bond Warden uh, to back up my lookout so that I can still push two damage through. So that's kind of like playing a two-drop. I'm able to get value out of my Bond Warden even though it can't attack. Alright, I think I'm going to go with... Baird? In the lookout. Uh, next turn I can do Hoplite and Bond Warden. I mean, I could have done that this turn, but... I kind of wanted to start my value train. Because he's getting tokens every turn with Rustine, so I need to get tokens every turn with Baird. In order to kind of stay not ahead on even tempo with him. Alright, well... There goes my lookout. He thinks that's going to stop Baird. He probably just should have killed Baird. I did not get a land, so we will go Hoplite. Into Bond Warden. So we will back up our lookout. And sure. Baird himself. Maybe I should have backed up the hoplite. I don't know. But that means I can still get in with the lookout. Attacking on the floor doesn't really do anything because he'll just block with rusting, which I can't quite kill yet. Okay, so he is going for insects, insects, and more insects. Just the butler. Uh, he's got a butler, gala greeters he's got, so I don't really think I want to give him that. One damage isn't going to kill me, so I don't have to block. So yeah, I'll gladly take the one to prevent you from getting stuff out of your graveyard. Find some other way to sacrifice him. I wish I could draw some land here. That would be really nice. So we're going to go ahead and do Lookout and Baird to try to bait out a blocker here. That's quite possibly the wrong play. He could have a trick up his sleeve that will kill Baird. So this is kind of a gamble, but it's one that I think I need to take. So he is going to double block. So he is expecting a combat trick. And I do have one in Didi. So Bonnet dies, Baird survives, and I continue getting tokens. So we were able to get rid of one of his creatures by forcing a block. And honestly, that didn't really have to force a block. He just wanted to get rid of Baird. So by putting my uh, important creature in danger, I was able to get rid of one of his important creatures and really push that advantage in. And so now my board is about twice his size, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay that way. Because he's got some big guys coming out next turn. So he's going to make everybody sack a creature. So he's going to sack Butler. I'm going to sack a token. And he's going to get something out of his graveyard.
All right, so he's got Gala Greeters and Dreadhound in hand. So I really need to pull some removal for Dreadhound. Thankfully, I pulled a land this turn. So we are going to cast Red Cap Heal Slasher. We're going to put it on Hoplite, which is going to copy it. Onto Baird. And we will go ahead and push an attack here. So yeah, it's going to force some chump blocks, which is fine because it's going to clear off his board a little bit. I still get the two flying through. I still get my token. And I can repeat this next turn, except he's going to have a really big creature next turn. And he just keeps pumping out the insects too, doesn't he? Oh, he's not going with Dreadhound? Oh, he's got the treasures to cast Dreadhound. Okay, yep. Oh! Alright, he's getting rid of Hoplite. Good for him. And now all I'm drawing is mana. Alright, so we've got Heal Slasher number two. We're going to go ahead and put it on my lookout. If I still had Hoplite out, I would have put one on Baird and swung with him again. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and swing in the air. He can block with Gravelighter if he wants to. And we'll go ahead and end our turn bluffing a combat trick. Maybe. Except I have no mana to cast it, so it's not a very good bluff. But there are some Convoke cards in the set. So, I mean, I could be bluffing a a Convoke card very easily. Unfortunately, his board is about to get really big with Gala Greeters. Dreadhound is going to make me start sacking things. And just really burn me out with all of his uh, creature mill. And unfortunately, a Plains is not removal. He is just going to keep getting tokens. Oh, all right. Well, that is a lot of things. That does not help me. That does not help me in the least. I mean, it's forced a block, I guess. So he's got a really big board, and he can swing in around my really big board. So he's got the tempo advantage even more so now. Alright, well I finally got removal, so we're going to go ahead and put a seal, I mean, probably on the Dreadhound. Because otherwise, when he attacks with those, they all die, and that's 8 damage immediately. So I'd need Dreadhound off the board. Um, let's go ahead and swing at that. So with Light Shield Array, I can give my creatures indestructible, which might help me uh, survive his incoming assault. So yeah, he's got enough mana that he can do whatever he wants. 
I honestly think my uh, best bet might be to hopefully stall out until he decks himself. But I don't think that's going to happen. He's going to have a huge board before then and swing out. Another invasion of Gobacon. All right. Uh, those are... All right, well, that's fine. He can't cast it anyway. So this is going to make my swooping lookout really, really big. Because he's going to get two counters every time he attacks. So eventually the lookout is just going to be uh, lethal on its own. And that's unfortunately my best play at the moment. Oh, another Dreadhound. Very nice. And this is when he attacks. So, yep, he's going to cast Rusting just to get another Death Trigger off of the Dreadhound. Uh, with his attack, I either die to damage or I die to Dreadhound Triggers. There's no in-between. I'm dead one way or another. He's not attacking? Why isn't he attacking? He's got lethal. Why isn't he attacking? Oh, if only I would have pulled more removal. That would have been very nice. I mean, there's no reason not to. We'll go ahead and give everything Hexproof and Indestructible. It might stop him from attacking, but he really should attack. He's got enough to... He's got lethal. Alright, so... Like we said... Alright, so we've got all blocks assigned, but like I said, with all of the death triggers from uh, Dreadhound, it's not going to matter because that's 15 creatures that are about to die. Which is 15 death triggers that are going to kill me. Okay, so I can't do anything until turn three. There is absolutely no way I can keep this hand. And again, all right. I mean, no. All right, well, I suppose I have to keep this. I've got a turn one play. I have to cut two things. This is, this is bad. And opponents apparently on burn, which means that they are going to make my life even harder. Red, green, okay. Well, let's start off with, um, Go to combat, see if it survives. It does. Okay. Uh, Baird, pass the turn, get a token. I'm good with that. Probably should have saved his burn until I put out something for him to burn. A harried Arzin. Hasty. Can transform next turn into a flying hasty. 
Uh, when it does, I can kill it. Uh, so attacking now is bad because he'll just block and kill whatever I do. So unfortunately, his one creature has stalled me out. Uh, my best bet is for him to transform Artisan, at which point I can kill it with Destroy Evil. And if he spends his entire turn to do so, then that will be a huge tempo swing for me. He's not. He's going to kill Baird instead. So that is a huge bad for me. So unfortunately, my mana goes to waste. Uh, but I don't have anything else to do anyway, so I can keep it up for next turn. So we will drop Bond Warden again, since that's all I can do. We'll go ahead and put the counter on the other one to make it a 2-3. Opponent probably has a burn. No. Nope. Okay, no burn. Uh, well, no attacks because those two will just bounce off of each other and nothing will happen. So, there's no reason to attack. I could have attacked with all three. Ooh, that's kind of bad. But at this point, there's no real tempo advantage to push. We're both at 19. The board's kind of stalled out. So, we're just kind of waiting to see who gets a better position. Uh, let's see, at this point though, with Elspeth Smite, that is a little different. So, I can go to combat. He's got some kind of combat trick, I know he does. So we'll go ahead and attack with everything but the O1. And see where he blocks, and I might be able to smite it. Now he has to know that this attack means that I have a combat trick. In which case, his best bet is to just let it go through. Unless he has a trick of his own. All right, well, let's see what he's got. All right, so he can pump it, but that makes it big enough that Destroy Evil can take it out, which is what I was planning on doing to begin with. Unfortunately, I don't have Destroy Evil now for the really big thing that he's about to cast. Really, he's gonna kill my O1? Why didn't he kill the 1-1? One, one? That would have made so much more sense. Alright, so we're going to swing in. Uh, push some damage. If I drop Mirror Shield now, it's just going to be a target. But opponent only has one card in hand. And if it was a burn spell, I'm assuming he would have burnt Bond Warden. So this should be a pretty safe play depending on what he draws. Uh, opponent seems to be pretty well out of gas at the moment. Or they might have a 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, this just got uh, really bad. And that is not removal. So I am not in a good spot here. I can't even block and kill Atali. I really need my removal. Alright, well, let's go ahead and double block Baird so that he doesn't get tokens every turn. Uh, I can't do anything about Atali. It's got Trample, so... Uh, the good thing is Bond Warden's tokens will go somewhere else, so I don't lose those. Oh, yes! My prayers have been answered. Seal from existence on Atali. Dinosaur goes bye-bye. And we're back in the game. All right. Opponent draws nothing. It's okay. Beseju does not do anything until... Uh, Saga 3, it becomes a really big, really big, but he is going to be dead by then. Ooh. So we are going to go ahead, swing on in again, and that should just be game. The opponent's digging for a disenchant. Nope, they are getting rid of one of my tokens. That seems kind of weird, unless they've got a way to get rid of the rest of them, because I only need one creature to hit him. 
even getting a tally back at this point doesn't necessarily oh there you go but yeah I've still got lethal he can't get rid of my last creature and that's game all right well this hand looks weird but I don't need a red until turn four so let's go ahead and keep it and see what happens Hopefully I'll draw a mountain at some point. So we'll start off with our swooping lookout, our very good turn one play. Ooh, he's got a very good turn one play of his own. All right, so I believe I could do Invasion of Gobukun now, but if he puts the Pegasus in front of my lookout, then I am pretty well hosed. So we're going to attack first to see if he blocks. He does block, so we're able to go ahead and get rid of his Pegasus. So that does kind of put me back a turn, but it puts him uh, back a turn in tempo too. So, I mean, we're still kind of neck and neck. I do have another removal spell for next turn, two more actually, so I can... Uh, get rid of something if I need to. Like that. So this definitely needs to die. He can make something a 3-3 three, three this turn. So, yep. So, yeah. We're gonna... Go ahead and get rid of that. It stays a 3 oh, Okay, good. I thought it, it went away. Celebrity Fencer, really good card. Um, Destroy Evil is a good counter to that because it's going to get pretty big. So I think I'm going to do Gobukan. So, yep, yeah, we'll go ahead and delay Darling of the Masses. We'll go ahead and swing on in. I wish I had some more creatures. Or a mountain. A mountain would work too. Uh, let's see. Best thing here is if that's a creature. Nope. They attack with Fencer. Okay. That really is the best thing for me. So now I can just smite it. And we just get rid of all of their tempo another smite okay well I suppose we'll just keep going at the invasion there's nothing else to do uh, they are gonna get darling of the masses down this turn though and that's going to start making some tokens for them but it is a 2-4 so it dies to destroy evil oh no they're doing something else here crowbar okay that's fine I can smite crowbar. Oh, that gets rid of my seal from existence. That's bad. Okay, so that's a tap ability on the artifact. The equipped creature gets that ability. Okay, so I have to kill the citizen this turn. So, unfortunately, this really sucks that I have to do this. So we are going to seal the crowbar. He can have the token. I don't care about the token. I'm getting rid of the crowbar because the crowbar will get rid of the seal on Ren. So I definitely need that to go away. That I am wasting essentially a three mana spell is worth it. So we finally got Light Shield Array turned around. So now Swooping Lookout can start gaining counters on its own. If I could ever draw a mountain, I might be in business. Darling finally hits, that's fine. Mountain, there we go, all right. So now I have a decision. I can either drop Baird and start collecting tokens. I can do Heal Slasher to make my Lookout bigger. Um, what I'm gonna do here is go for Baird and destroy evil 
because I really want to make sure that Darling of the Masses does not get to start generating tokens. So we'll attack with my flyer. He can't block. We'll drop Baird to start my token generation. And because it's an attack trigger, I'm just going to go ahead and destroy it now so that he doesn't even untap with it. And another crowbar. Okay, well that is some bad for me. Although I do have Light Shield Array now, so that can give uh, all my permanents hexproof. Oh, only creatures, not permanents. Oh, well, that's bad. Very, very bad. Okay, so he doesn't have anything to do. What he should have done is put Crowbar on his other token and then activated it immediately. Letting me untap is just uh, begging for trouble. So I am going to go to combat and try to bait the citizen into a block on my token because the 2-2 two -two should block the 1-1 one -one, so that I'm trying to bait that block very nice and so now we can except smiting it doesn't really stop what's about to happen Oops, I forgot to play my land for the turn. Well, he can still uh, attach Crowbar and use it to free Ren. And it looks like that's what he's doing. Unfortunately, I can't stop it this time. So Ren is going to hit the field again. I just hope that I have enough power to stop it or kill it at this point. He's blowing up Light Shield Array? Really? Okay. I mean, instead, anyway, I might as well activate it. That was not what I expected. I definitely expected him to go for the Seal from Existence. Uh, so now, at this point, we've got... Uh, pretty well free reign here. So we'll go ahead and put the backup on Baird. Uh, we'll go ahead and swing in with everything uh, except the 1-1. One, one. Uh, if he wants to block here, he doesn't really have any good blocks. He has to give something up. And so we're able to push that advantage and just keep pressuring his life total. Okay, well that does nothing. Opponent is pretty well out of gas at this point. Yup. Ooh, alright. Well, I don't have a turn one play, but I've got Elspeth here. So we're definitely keeping this one. All right, well, he's getting a pretty good uh, advantage here off of that. He's about to get a 2-2 Menace. What's he doing here? Oh, Ninjitsu. Okay. Well, Hoplite is not going to really help me out against that. I can't not play him, though. I could... I probably should have just passed and left up mana for Smite. Because now he's going to attack. I'm not going to block. He might think I'm going to block, though. Or he can just kill it, so I can't block anyway. That works. That works, too. Yep. And so opponent is going to attack in here and take advantage of uh, his tempo. Because they have certainly started off pretty quick. And they're going... Not going to ninjutsu anything? Okay. Well, that, that works, I guess. So I don't have anything to do here except wait. All right, so let's see what he does. I have the capability in hand of wiping his current board. But let's see what happens with the ninjutsu. 
Cumonix Rat King. Okay, that's not expected for this deck. Why is he going for rats? He finds a Blight Belly Rat, okay. Oh, those are rats. Oh, okay. That is interesting. He's not doing ninjutsu. He's doing rat tribal. That is fun. That is a fun little thing he's got going on. All right. So we will destroy evil to destroy an enchantment, which that happens to be. And we'll go ahead and smite that guy. So we'll go ahead and play Elspeth here and make a little 1-1, one -one, just a little chump blocker. Um, unfortunately, that's about all she can do at the moment. Yep, and he makes me second, so that's fine. That I expected that. I was hoping I could keep her around a little bit longer, though. All right, so I actually think I'm going to let this one hit. He's got more removal. All right, so he gets rid of my token because he couldn't hit the Valkyrie because I'm not corrupted yet. Is he going to swing in, though? He is. No, he doesn't. All right. Well, unfortunately, my little First Strike Life Linker here does not have Vigilance. What kind of an angel doesn't have Vigilance? So I'm just going to have to pass. All right, well, I don't think I beat this deck. Just too much removal. And I didn't draw anything. Mostly that I didn't draw anything. It's not necessarily that the opponent's deck has too much removal. It's more that I just didn't draw any gas, and so I've just been sitting here playing lands, and my tempo deck is not keeping tempo. Yeah, and just more land. Just more land, that's it. Alright. Yeah. It happens. Every now and then you just get mana screwed. Or flooded in this case. Alright, well. I don't have a turn one play, but I do have Baird into Hanger Scrounger. So, that's, I suppose, worth keeping. Opponents on the play, though, so I might be a little slow. wish you would have been a one drop so I am losing tempo on turn one but nothing happens on turn two so we're gonna go ahead and throw Baird out he might get uh, some removal here from the opponent they are sitting with mana open and yep go for the throat is two mana nothing okay he survives for now subduer what's that do Attacks alone. Oh, he's on the samurai deck. Okay. Um. So we will go ahead and do hanger scrounger. I'm gonna put the counter on scrounger because I'm not attacking with Baird, and that will diversify his removal targets. So he can either remove Baird to stop the tokens or remove scrounger to stop the tokens, but he can't remove Baird and stop both. So I am going to be left with at least one threat. Ooh. I don't know what that does, but it's got a lot of words. Draw a card if your life total is greater than or equal to the last noted life total. Okay, so basically I have to hit him every turn or he draws a card. Okay. 
Okie dokie then. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put this one on Baird. We'll swing with him and the scrounger. I don't want to do that because I have this. We'll go ahead and pitch... I don't know. Destroy evil, I guess. And I just get a land. I shouldn't have done anything. Alright, so I hit him. Which means that he does not draw a card off of Sigarda's Splendor. Okay, so he can exploit to draw two cards and lose two life, which he's not doing. He's not attacking either. Okay. So I've got five mana. I could do Boonbringer Valkyrie or Hanger Scrounger. Or I could do Hanger Scrounger and Gobacon. The thing is, with Gobacon, I don't have... I actually think I'm going to do that. I want to see his hand. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. So that's all he's got left. Alright, so that did force some removal, which is fine. Uh, let's go with Scrounger again. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the back up here. And we'll swing with one. Two. If I swing with all three, that guarantees that I hit. Well, I need to hit him twice. So yeah, we'll go ahead and swing with everything. So he's going to block to keep his guys alive. Okay. That's fine. He does not gain. Okay. That's a fun little card. That's fine. He can sanctify my... Alright, so he has gained 6 life this turn. There is no way that I am stopping Sigarda's Splendor from giving him a card. So, my best bet here is going to be... Boonbringer Valkyrie on... The Scrounger. And then take both of them at Gobacon. Sure, let's pitch Scrounger, see what I get. A land. Well. Alright, so we did get it flipped. Which is great. And turn, get some plus one counters. He's gonna draw a card, but that's fine. He can actually kill my Light Shield Array if he wants to with his Sanctify. Yep, alright, that, that tracks. So he trades for my scrounger, so I don't have any more hand filtering, which is kind of sad. No idea what that does. Oh, it just gets bigger. So he's got a nice little combo here. Every time he gains life, that gets bigger, and every time he casts a white spell, he gains life. Alright, so we've got another bear. We're back in business. We'll go ahead and swing those two again, because I do want to keep pushing, uh, pressuring his life total. Don't tell me he's got... Oh. Voice of the Blessed is now an angel. 
Oh, no, nope, not yet. Okay, it's not when it's a 4-4, four, four, it's when it has four counters. But now it's bigger than my Heal Slasher. So I need a backup card here in order to keep it alive. And that is not a backup card. Which means that I do literally nothing now. Forever. Alright, so he now has a really big attacker with Vigilance. I need removal. He's not attacking with it? It's got Vigilance. Why isn't he attacking with it? You are not removal! Mm-hmm. There you go. You finally, hit, finally figured out how the attack button works. All right. And removal. You are not removal. I told you that last turn. So I have exactly one more turn to draw my removal. And it doesn't matter because now it's just over. In order for me to even stay in this game. Because he's got lethal next turn. This card has to be removal. And so help me God if it's another planes. Oh my God! Alright, so... Uh, trying to cast 40 creatures. Uh, my daily quest today. We played eight games. We went three and five. Uh, the games we lost to were just really heavy black removal, which if you can't get creatures out, you can't build tempo. If you can't build tempo, then you can't aggro, which is what this deck is trying to do. So, I mean, that kind of hard counter, of course, is going to kill the deck. Uh, there were other games where we just... Uh, didn't find our removal. We have three sealed from existence. We have three destroy evil, but we all we could find was yet another planes. So I'm not salty about that at all. Maybe a little. So that's what. Anyway, but the games where we did win, I really didn't get a good showing of the tempo play because the opponent was like, oh, well, I'm behind in tempo, I can't catch up, I'm going to scoop. And so we didn't really get the full uh, push that I was hoping for for the video. So we're going to go try a few bot matches and see if we can find an opponent that doesn't quit. Alright, so here we've got our turn one. Uh, Gobekan, I guess, is a turn two play. So yeah, we can go ahead and keep this. We've got a decent uh, ramp going on here. We are missing a 3-drop. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and play our Swooping Lookout for our turn 1 play. We do have a uh, tap land, but we're going to save that for a point in our curve that we aren't trying to push creatures. So we did draw Hoplite, which is a much better uh, turn two than Gobakan. So we're going to go ahead and put him out. And Lookout has Vigilance, so we can swing in above all his blockers and not have to worry about it. Ooh, now he has a 2-2 Flyer. That's not good for me. Alright, so at this point... Crag's the only land we have left, so we'll go ahead and throw that out, gain a life. Um, so at this point, we could do another Hoplite. Which I might do, because if I do draw a land, then Heal Slasher would be able to hit pretty much everybody. The other option is to do Gobakan. 
to get um, you can do that look at your opponent's hand and maybe make something a little heavier to play. But I think Hoplite's the best play here, uh, hoping to draw that fourth land next turn. Unfortunately, I don't have any good attacks here. Um, I could attack him with Hoplite, but that would either be an even trade there, a down trade there, or just nothing. Uh, same with Lookout, it would trade with the Warden, and so there's no real benefit to me attacking here. Unfortunately, the tempo is kind of shifting to my opponent here. Uh, they do have more uh, creatures out than I do. I did not draw my land, but I did draw another backup creature, so that is good. So with that backup creature, I can put a plus one counter on the lookout. Both hoplites copy it. And so all my creatures gain uh, plus one counters. Uh, attacking with lookout is now a good play because the only block he has is a bad block. So we're going to go ahead and push that attack. And with the vigilance, I can even keep it back on, on defense. So he is attacking with the 3-3. Three, three. I can block with my hoplite to kill it, but that would kill my hoplite, and his ability is more important to me than 3 damage, because 3 damage is not going to kill me by any means. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go through. And we pull Elspeth. If only I had pulled enough uh, mana to cast her. So I don't really have anything to do this turn except for Invasion and Lookout. Unfortunately, opponent does not have any more cards in hand, so Invasion doesn't really do anything at the moment. But I can go ahead and cast Lookout. Um, if I attack the Invasion... There's more of a chance that the opponent will let it go because the two damage versus the three invasion counters. Um, so that is something that the opponent is likely to not block. If they do block, then I'll at least trade with uh, their warden. Okay, so they are going to put everything in front of it. So I can kill the warden. My other lookout will be able to handle the Zephyr Gall. So it's important that this one kills the Warden of Eva Sile. Unfortunately, I do lose my lookout. But it was a fair trade. It was a fair one-for-one -one trade, so I'm not unhappy with it. I do get my fourth land now. Okay. So I can either do Heal Slasher or Elspeth. I think I want to do Heal Slasher. So we'll give plus one to the flyer um, and my two hoplites. And because of the backup ability, they'll all gain first strike this turn. Um, so we will go ahead and swing them all in. Let's see, it's eight, nine, ten. I'll go ahead and swing the hoplites to face. No. I'll go ahead and swing one of them at Gobicon. And the other two to face. Um, let's see if they defend the battle. And if not, well, it's okay. They don't make any blocks. Alright. That was not expected. So Gobicon flips, I get the light shield array, and we get a whole bunch of more plus one, plus one counters. So that is definitely good for me. Alright, so we almost have more creatures than my opponent. Uh, we've got one, we're actually pretty even on board. But I have a better 
quality of creatures, so I think it's time to push uh, our advantage. I can cast Elspeth here, so we'll go ahead and put my Planeswalker on the board. Alright, so do I want to create the creature here, or the two plus one counters? Alright, so we're going to use Elspeth's uh, plus one ability here to create a soldier token. Uh, that doesn't really do anything, but it does put more creatures on the board to help push that tempo. Uh, we're going to leave him behind, actually, to block. Well, I have to. He's got summoning sickness. So, unfortunately, I can't attack with him this turn. If I attack with the heal slasher, there's a chance that the octopus will block it and kill it. If I attack with the scrounger, there's a chance that anything else will block and kill it. But if I attack with everything, because I'm presenting lethal with these three, they are going to be the primary threats. So the chances are these two will either not be blocked or will not be properly blocked. And so it's quite uh, possible that I might get out of this with all my creatures still intact. Or it's quite possible that he could... Uh, chump the heel slasher with the octopus, kill the scrounger with the seagull, and just like chump the other two. But anyway, so it's possible I could lose these two on this push, but the other three would effectively decimate the opponent's board. I do have a chump blocker held back, so it's not a bad block. It is risky. Um, the opponent has mana up, so they could have a combat trick, but they're empty-handed, so I know there's no combat trick. Um, let's go ahead and see what I pull. Another Hoplite, that's fine. So, yep, they're kind of blocking how I thought they would. Oh, wow, they're putting everything in front of Hoplite. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and kill the Gull first, because that will clear the room for my Flyers. Uh, so that is 5 damage on Hoplite, so it would kill the Hoplite. That will kill the Heal Slasher. Um, I do have an Ace up my sleeve in Light Shield Array. So I can activate this to make all my stuff indestructible until end of turn. So that even though my creatures are taking lethal damage, they are not dying. Whoa. That's going to leave a mark. And so I have now pushed my opponent into critical HP, there is absolutely no way that they get around another attack. And so even though we've got a, uh, a non-hasty creature here from the soldier, it can't attack, but we have just flooded the board with all of our tokens and all of our creatures We've used our backup abilities to keep pushing through even more damage uh, to kind of get around that summoning sickness. We've kept adding to our board state every turn to create this armada that the opponent just isn't able to keep up with. So they can make blocks here, but it's just not going to be enough. Nice job. And so that's kind of how taking the initiative and putting your opponent on the defensive will help give you a tempo advantage and just keep pushing damage through. And so this is the tempo deck that we were using. Uh, hopefully this video has helped you understand the concept of tempo and how keeping your mana curve and curving out by casting creatures every turn can help you push tempo and help overwhelm your opponent's board. Because tempo is, like we said, based on your board state relative to your opponent. Taking the initiative with your creatures, forcing the attacks, forcing your opponent to make bad blocks will help pressure their life total 
and eventually you'll just have a swarm of creatures on your board. We saw kind of Elspeth pumping out tokens every turn. Uh, Baird can do it to Invasion of Gobicon if you're able to flip it. We'll just keep giving you plus one counters every turn, making everything bigger. And your opponent just isn't going to keep up with the insane tempo advantage that you can get from uh, focusing on this kind of strategy. So I hope this helped. Uh, please go ahead and put a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more of these concept videos. And let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear any questions you guys might have. And I would love to answer them for you as best I can. So until next time, I will see you in the next video.